Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and the latest video on the 2023 Volkswagen Tago, also known as a Lamborghini Urus. For those of you that have watched the previous ones, everyone thought this was an Urus on the back of the truck. You can go back and watch those ones. Bonnet, brand new, ordered from TPS, genuine Volkswagen. Everything on this car has all been genuine. We haven't had to, we haven't bought any pattern parts for it whatsoever. We are at that stage now. The hinges are done. The bonnet's here. We're going to start the process of panelling this one up. And then, of course, also possibly get it off the jig as well. I think we'll get it off the jig in this video. Anyway, no time for waffle. We need to be getting on with it. Let's crack on. Exciting times now. Time to fit that up. And that's the new headlight in there. Passenger side, driver's side, new headlight in there. And already look at the difference in the car just with the headlights in. Back out again there. Chris must have forgot to put a bolt in that top of that washer bottle. Oh no, he's taking it out to actually do that repair on the edge of the wing. Just get that straightened up a bit better so that the headlight fits in. I know he's going to perfect that later in the video. There's the new front bumper. We got lucky and bought this as a complete unit and on the car. As much as I appreciate, it is quite difficult to show a black car in the workshop, but look at that. That looks incredible. And how are you ever going to know that that car add that damage on it that's easy the only way you're going to find out by using car vertical so here is the little volkswagen tago and as you can see the top three are green and then going down to damage clearly highlighted there in amber with a triangle clicking straight onto the damaged it does say this vehicle was damaged and the vehicle was marked as an insurance write-off and scrolled in a little bit further down it clearly says there written off category S repairable structural damage. Also on car vertical, it checks for theft. It checks the UK and 53 other countries. It tells you many, many things that you will not find on other checks. The most interesting thing on here for me personally is timeline and you've got three records found there. So the manufacturer's date, the date it was registered in the UK and the date it was written off. But on a slightly older vehicle, well, it doesn't matter how old the vehicle is, it will give you more information. So it will give you all of your MOTs on there as and when the MOTs are due, they will be listed on there with the passes, the fails, the advisories, everything you need to know. Also service inputs from the main dealer will also be in timeline. Of course, this one is far too new to show any of that, but I do just want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on the Salvage Rebuilds channel. Use the little code up on screen now for a nice little saving off your check or click on the link in the description where you will automatically receive your discount. It's just come out unbelievable. Yeah, the bumper is the wrong colour, but that, it, it was a choice, grey or white. And we went for the grey one, of course, because it's going to be easy for them to just scotch that off and paint it. Headlights went in there, no problem at all, Chris said. Straightened up this front wing. Yes, it does need the little tiny bit of filler work on it there and there and a little bit on the tip. But he got that bang on and we're at that stage where we're ready to actually try the bonnet on. So we're going to lift that on and I guess get it down off that jig with a bit of luck. Let's do it. Let's get it on there. This is a bit of a joke, this one. I want you to count how many times up and down did we go with this bonnet in this particular clip. Oh, my arms were getting worn out. We had it up and down that many times. Loads of adjustment on it. On the hinges, of course, we put new ones on. They needed to be adjusted. The front latches on the bonnet, they needed to be adjusted, wound in, wound out, etc. But we got there with it in the end. For everyone that said, a scrap, just look at it. We just leave the man to do his thing and look at it. It is unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, that's lovely. Turn the lights on, Chris. Just flick them on. We looked at them a minute ago. It's got really bright DRLs on it. What, do you want the key? Yeah. Everything is working. I haven't checked the parking sensors yet, but I don't think they're worth worrying about at the moment, I'm sure. Yeah, DRLs are all lovely. Headlights. Yeah, everything's working, mate, just as it should. 
Yeah. Less than a thousand miles on this one. A lot of people said, oh, it's one litre, three cylinder engine. It is a turbo. And honestly, like these little one litres now, they're more powerful than like my Escort's 130 horsepower. This is probably 150. It, they do go well. All gapped up. Like Chris just did say to me, that bonnet could do with coming this way just a couple of, like a mil, but we've got to have the bonnet off to paint the inside and then refit it again. And of course, he's got to do these bits of bodywork, so we'll get that. But the gaps on it are incredible. Look at that wing gap down there. They don't come any more factory than that, that's for sure. Right, so on to the process of the little bit of bodywork that this car needs and Chris will probably crack on, get that done. I'm not going to ask him because he hasn't got a microphone on, but he'll probably get this repaired and then um, do the primer and actually prime and paint the inside of the bonnet because we've got the paint for it that he used on the chassis legs. If not, he would probably just be priming it all together. So we're going to leave him to crack on with that. It's going to be bumper back off this corner, headlight out, just so that he can get to it and manipulate any of the, the little damage bits here it's slightly low so it's just got to be taken out a little bit then he'll clean it up and put the tiniest little skim of filler in there but drop it in the comment section down below i think i'll say it every time i'll take me out off to him he <laughs> he sure does know his stuff let's get on with it and straight on to the bodywork on this front wing you can see chris has taped up the headlight and actually taped up the edge of the bumper, unclipped the edge of the bumper. Because he's going to need that for the shape, he's going to want to keep putting it on, off, on, off, until he gets that shape absolutely bang on, then he can remove it permanently. So I got that about right, and in with a bit of body filler. Again, plenty of tape around the edges, so that when you are rubbing it down, you don't mark any of the paintwork, like on the bumper, or scratch the headlight. Quite often he puts duct tape on and then mask over the top or round the other way, vice versa. So an important part of the puzzle that needs sorting out on this car, I'm going to try not to hit that door on that stand this time. I didn't mark it, luckily. In the last video, a couple of people said, yeah, Rob, you just hit that door, and I did, you're right. This seat, very, very expensive to get fixed. I believe they are just polo airbags, and I've said this before, I've never seen that before. Look at the size of that airbag, the protection that this car's got. Let me step back a bit. Imagine that blowing up. So it did only go curtain airbag this side and this seat. It did rip on the seams and our man Lee Drake did say he could fix that. But of course it was finding that airbag because you don't get that in an earlier polo. But so lucky for us. What did the chap say about this? The car was burnt, or no, one it of the was the other side. It was the passenger side was done. The passenger side airbag had gone off in the car that he had there. So he he did say, I "Don't normally sell single seats, but the interior is ruined, so he will just sell us that one seat, which was so lucky. So it's got all the airbags in it, and it is pretty much wants cleaning up, and it's going to be ready to fit in that car. We've also got curtain, curtain airbag." airbag. So Chris is going to grab that, and I think this is going to be a good opportunity for us to actually... Oh, I'm going to move that in a minute, because I'm going to end up clipping it. Get this seat out, get the new one in there, get the new curtain in there, and actually get these seat belts out, because it, these are not the same as a polo. I've got the part number for them, and they're not coming up as the same. So I'm just going to double-check the part numbers on them. If they can't, they can go off to airbag team and be reset. I believe that one's definitely gone off. That one, has that gone off or is that caught? Yep, that's gone off as well. And then round this side. Oh, no, that one's gone off because it's actually smashed the piece of plastic there and cracked it up there. And we've got a new one of those for it as well. I think every airbag's gone off, uh, every seatbelt's gone off. Yeah, and that one's locked tight. So, yeah, let's, let's get on with it and get that done. Very, very tight to work in here. The driver's seat, I think, was the easy bit. 
getting this sun visor out was a nightmare. It has the same little clips as the curtain airbags. Well, almost the same. If they was the same, I'm sure I would have got it out. But in the end, I had to put a bit of weight on it while Chris got in there with a pick. Straight onto the driver's side airbag, curtain airbag, and the driver's side seatbelt. Well, that was definitely one of the most difficult curtain airbags ever to get out. And I know I've said, said it in previous videos, but I'm going to say it again. Just for those of you guys that haven't done these, that are going to be taking them apart. In fact, let me stick that in there. And then I can explain. So, looking at those clips, you see, basically, that locks. They squeeze together. But a lot of people just hack these. And these ones have come off that curtain airbag that we've bought. And you can see there how bent up it is. You can't reuse that. You definitely don't want to reuse it. Because if it goes off again, it could ping out. So if you actually look inside those holes there. I don't know if you can. Yeah, can you see those two little tiny silver tags in there? So there's one each side. And what you have to do is stick a, a pin in there and just bend it that way. And then bend that one that way at the same time to get those to pop out. But what I'll do is put a bit of weight underneath it with a trim clip remover. Just get the pick under there, pop one side out, keep the weight on it, and then pop the other side out. But yeah, these was all mullered. And I've got all of ours out without damaging them because I've done them quite a few times. Got that out of there and then removed that seat belt. But again, had a bit of a shock with the seat belt. It's actually got, you can see... There's a wire there for a motor on the seatbelt, which I've never seen. You've got your wire there that goes to your explosive part of your seatbelt. And you've got another one down here. Let me show you the seatbelt. Never seen a seatbelt like this in one of these little cars. This is like the old Vauxhalls. It's actually gone off and all crimpled up. So that's going to need doing. And then you've got the seatbelt there. And it's all one unit. It doesn't come apart. But we just said, let's have a little Google of the numbers on here. So I Googled this number here, which is L006096. I mean, you can Google that yourself. It might be an eight on the end, actually. Um, Porsche, late Porsche seatbelts in a Volkswagen Tago. The only two come up available for sale, and they're both out of a Porsche. But you can see this one has actually got a little motor on the back of it. The motor plugs in there, and then, of course, your pretension a bit plugs in there and there. But that's just one of them out. Airbag team, I've just rung him. He sent me a postage label, so I need to get the other three out and get them in the post to him ASAP. Chris is actually waiting for me. He's done. He is ready to put some primer on. But, of course, once you spray the primer, look, he's sitting there waiting for me. Once he sprays that primer, it's shut the door and got to go home for the day. We're not going to stay in here and breathe it in all day. So I'm going to crack on, get them seat belts out, and then he can do that just before we leave. Let's get the rest of those belts out. I found it was best to actually take the back seat base up, get that out of the way, and remove those whole panels that run from the front of the car up the B post and all the way down the back of the car and run up the C post. I just took the whole things out and everything was exposed. Bit tricky to get those rear ones out because you had to remove the actual back panels themselves, the inner panels here. You see they lean right over and I've just managed to get it down enough to get in there and get the bolt undone while Chris flipped the, uh, flicked the little clip out. And again, the same this side. You can see this one's actually out a lot more. That clip's just about to fall out. Let's push that in properly. You don't want to lose any of them because they'll rattle around in there and drive you absolutely mad. But that is curtain airbag back in, all the seat belts removed. And as fast as I could get them out, Chris was actually packing them up so they're ready to go. I've got to drop that to DPD Pickup. I'll Google that. I'm sure they're everywhere now. So I'm going to go and do that. Chris is going to now prime this. And I guess we'll be back in the morning. And we're there with it. Ready almost for that paint shop. But the car is still bolted down to the frame machine. All the repairs done. Primed. Gone rock hard. Chris has actually guide coated that this morning. So that is ready now to flat off and do the paint work. 
But look at the way everything fits. We're so, so happy with the way this come out. All the wheels are back. Of, of course, I had to take one more of them over to JW Smarts, get that done. That is completely done. They've all got the original hand-cooked tyres on them. So we're going to get them wheels fitted and finally get this off the frame machine. And maybe give us a nod, Chris, because we won't hear, even get this up and down the yard for a drive. Well, should do. Should do. No reason why not. No. Well, we give it a go. I've There's also... exhaust bracket to uh, do underneath. Oh, is there? That's it. Yeah, I think that's it. New driver's seat, that's in there as well. I've got tracking information this morning saying that the seatbelts were out for delivery today to airbag team. I only posted them yesterday afternoon, so let's get these wheels on anyway and get it off this frame machine. In my opinion, the most exciting part when you are coming to the end and it is ready to come off the frame machine and you're gonna know whether it actually drives because we don't know with this car. You see it in the first video, the engine, was on the floor it was pretty much falling out of this car and a lot of damage on the front of it we got it running in the last video but let's see if it actually drives well that is it we think we know it runs it's all built back up of course it is a bit it's got to be built back it's got now come apart to have that bumper stripped but regardless we wanted to get this to the point of paint shop fire it up mate don't forget it's got a loose exhaust bracket so it might might clunk a bit. Oh, the one with the little orange rubbers underneath. Yeah, yeah, couldn't get to it. Couldn't get to them on this ramp, unfortunately. Yeah, you heard it. I heard it donk, yeah. yeah. Sounds nice though, Chris. Yeah. Right, goes in gear, all right. Reverse camera works. Oh, it's got a reverse camera? Yeah. It's moving, mate. It drives. Yeah, brakes are good. How lovely is it to see that car driving off that frame machine. I mean, do we remember in part one of this, the horror on Chris's face when I arrived with this car? Shall I open the gates up, run it up and down the yard? Yeah. Let's do that. Dust on it. We, What's on that? The, if we get the hose pipe. Yeah, we'll give it a quick the, rinse off. And wash then, the uh, screen off. Yeah, run it up and down the yard, mate. Look how lovely that car looks. I'm going to say it again, I did not expect to see that car driving just yet. It's incredible what Chris has done to that. I think you'd all agree. So Sound, far, so good. Sounds lovely now, it's warming up, mate. Yeah, I'll turn around, mate. All right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Stop there. Steer that way. Yeah, and that way. Yeah. It's got them same lights on it as my van. Or follow me home yeah. or something. Yeah. All good, mate. Right. Sounds Do right. I have I to go on that other lift. And I can do that exhaust bracket. Can you hear it rattling when you're driving? Uh, you, when you brake, you can hear yeah. it donking a bit. You got many lights did on? Did you hear it when it started up? I did a little donk, yeah. yeah. so uh, washer fluid, we've not filled it up yet. No. Um, it's lane assist business, that's probably all to do with the radar. Yeah. Which is fitted, but is wire tied to the crash bar, so it's not in the right position. Um, airbag light, but... Um, Apart from that, that's it. All the seatbelts are missing from it. So, yeah. Look at that um, mileage. 970. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you're going to have to, um, once this is all back from paint, you're, you're going to have to uh, snag it. But it'd be nice to keep it under the under the Under 1,000, yeah. But it's going to be difficult to snag it, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. going over that. But, uh, yeah, all good. It mate. washed up all right as well. It was as nice underneath all that dust as we thought. I can smell the burning dust where this has been yeah. sat yeah. around for a while, but all, right. all seems fine. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, no point showing it on camera doing that exhaust bracket, really, is there? No, will, no, not at all. put it straight back on it while, while the lifts clear the other side. 
I'll get that in and do that. And so, I've forgotten to put the dust caps on the bleed nipples. Right. So, um, you know yourself, sometimes you have to go around it a second time. Right? Yeah. But they're fine. So I can put those dust caps on while it's on the lift. And um, yeah, and then a little flatten a little bit of uh, primer and it's, it's ready. And well, and to strip that bumper off yeah, yeah don't matter it's ready for paint shop yeah mate. this one can go to jw smile yeah. so they have to squeeze us in yeah all right mate all right, it was mate. absolutely no stopping him on that one and i think we are all in agreement it's a minor miracle it just looks unbelievable in the period of time that it's took for chris to square that car up panel it up and get it looking like that there's going to be one more video on that car it's going to be the numbers the bit of paintwork, build it up, and I think that one's gonna be ready to go out the door, hopefully, to one of you guys. So, unfortunately, that is gonna be the end of today's video. As usual, if you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up. We really appreciate it, and it shows your appreciation. Hit the share button, share it on all your social networking sites, it's free of charge, as is subscribing and hitting that notification bell. If you wanna follow us on Instagram, offer us a car, buy one of our cars, Selvage Rebuilds UK, Selvage Rebuilds Chris. Like, subscribe and share and we'll see you all on Sunday in the next one.